So our journey begins with, no, 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 not that one. A lot of people refer to this one as the original, but there were two games before that one that we need to talk about. Yes, this is the one. Bakudan Otoko, which translates to Bomb Man, apparently. It was released on all of these consoles and computers here in July of 1983. Wow, these computers are ancient even by my standards. Let's try out the sharp version and see how it- What the hell am I looking at? Okay, here's the MSX version. What's interesting is that the title in the game is already Bomber Man, even though the game's title was Bakudan Otoko. So I guess they decided to have that in English. Meanwhile, we see that our hero here is... a guy with a hat and feather and overalls and a... Hitler mustache? I couldn't find too many story details on the Japanese version. It might be that you are a man killing balloons, but this is from the old wiki, which is unreliable, and the source to it is a dead link. So really, we're going to have to go off of what the UK release of this game has to say. Yes, this game was released on the MSX and ZX Spectrum, or ZX Spectrum, in PAL regions in 1984. It wasn't released in North America, though. This will become a reoccurring thing, by the way. There are Bomberman games that were Japan exclusive, games that were released in Japan and PAL regions but not North America, games that were released in Japan and North America but not in PAL regions, and games that were released in all three regions, and I will be keeping track of all of this. Anyway, the English language release of Bakudan Otoko was retitled Eric and the Floaters. The package tells us that Eric is an archaeologist looking for treasure and fighting evil so-called floaters. Are you kidding me? Are you telling me that Bowerman's name all this time was Eric? When we start the game, we see that a whole lot of things we'd associate with Bowerman are already here. We're in a stage locked to a grid made up of hard blocks that are indestructible and soft blocks that we can bomb away. We're a guy who can place bombs to defeat enemies, but we're also vulnerable to our own bombs. The bombs explode in a cross shape and automatically set off other bombs. And, of course, balloons. Oh, balloons. Across all of Bomberman's adventures, he has faced evil scientists, evil bombers, demons, giant monsters, giant mechs, giant crotch people. We'll get to all of those in good time. But it's interesting to note that perhaps Bomberman's greatest mortal enemies have been here since the start, even before we have Bomberman as a character. Balloons. The first major difference you might notice here to how Bomberman would play later is that we are locked into half-steps. There's no fluid movement from one position to another. This alone wouldn't be that remarkable. It's an older game, so we're a bit limited in our positioning. But we're actually less limited in another kind of positioning. Bomb placement. That's right. Bombs are not locked to be placed in exact positions on the grid. They can be placed in these in-between half-steps. Meaning that we can blast away half of a soft block if we choose to do so. It's actually a viable strategy here. We can't go through a half-opened block and enemies can't either, but bomb explosions can. So we can attack enemies at this position while staying in safety ourselves. Doesn't always work though. The movement of these balloons is a bit unpredictable, especially when they change color, which changes their behavior. Another thing to note is that we can walk through our own bombs, and so can enemies. So no protecting yourself by placing bombs in an enemy's path like in later games. Bombing blocks will reveal treasure items for extra points and the exit door. But entering it doesn't bring us to the next stage, it brings us to the same stage with a freshly generated layout. Bombing the exit door or a treasure item spawns a bunch of enemies, so that's something to avoid. We get to the next stage by defeating all the balloons, so the door is kind of unnecessary. I guess it's meant only as a panic option if you're cornered and decide it would be best to do the stage over again? You know, I always thought the explosions were cross-shaped because of the grid structure in Bomberman. I thought the hard blocks blocked the parts of the explosion that would have gone diagonally, thus making a cross-shaped explosion. And later games where we were off the grid kept it because of tradition. But no. With these half-step placements, we can see the explosions were cross-shaped from the start, with no explanation given. There is no ending in this game. You play as long as you can until you run out of lives and go for the high score. The first level has one balloon, the second two, 
The third is re, and the fourth level is a special auto-bomb setting stage that repeats after every four stages. Bomb auto-setting stages mean that you can move, but have no control over placing bombs. They are set automatically. This would become one of the negative effects the skull item would give you in the battle mode of later games. One annoying thing to note is that if two or more balloons are on top of each other, you can only kill one at a time. I guess they're using each other as shields? Oh, and every stage is on a time limit. When you beat a stage, the remaining time gives you extra points. Which for the ZX Spectrum version sounds like this. If time runs out, instead of losing a life directly or spawning more enemies, all soft blocks are removed from the stage. Remember, enemies go through bombs, so now there's nothing to stop them from getting you except running and hoping you can hit them. Last thing to talk about would be the death animations. I mean, just look at how morbid they are. Oh, and by the way, the death animation for that sharp version looks like this. Overall, an interesting experience. There is fun to be had with it, but it doesn't really scream first of a long-running best-selling series to me quite yet. Let's see where we go from here. The next game, released in 1984, was 3D Bomberman and was Japan exclusive, releasing on all of these systems. It plays pretty much identically to the previous game, so you could argue it's an enhanced port of the first game if you wanted. The main difference here is that we play in a first-person perspective. This could be really confusing until you get used to it. There is a small top view map on the right that can help you somewhat, but you can only see objects and the edge of the stage on it, not blocks. So for navigating around the blocks on the stage that you can't see, you'll have to rely on your memory. Half steps are still a thing here, though bombing through half-bombed blocks doesn't work as well, since the map doesn't show you the exact position of an enemy to a T. They could always be one step farther back or forward than you think. Auto bomb setting is gone, so it's just you placing bombs, defeating enemies, and getting to the next stage until you run out of lives. Oh, and the exit doors, or ladders, actually bring you to the next stage this time, though you don't get points for remaining time, so it might be better to bomb it and kill the enemies that spawn if you're going for the high score. Treasure is back too, and this is what it looks like if the treasure and an enemy are on the same spot. Just thought I'd share that. Gosh, the enemies do look kinda creepy here, don't they? Especially when they're right in your face and it says, you are dead. You don't even need to die from an enemy for that to happen. If you blow yourself up, one will just spawn in front of you for the death screen. The first person's perspective sounds interesting on paper, but honestly, I don't think it works that well. I do prefer the first game to this one. And as far as the series goes, that is the last we'll see of this treasure-seeking guy with a hat who may or may not be an archaeologist named Eric. The stage layout, bombs, and even the balloons will stay, but the hero? Well, we'll have to look at the next game to see how that will develop.